Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and welcome to Fail Friday, the series where I either fix your baking fails, my baking fails, or I help you to avoid a fail. And today, it's going to be a business baking video. So I'm gonna be telling you the ways to avoid looking unprofessional for your at-home baking business. Now, of course, there's lots of advice in here that I'm going to be giving that is relevant to commercial bakeries as well. But I feel that at-home bakers are kind of a special genre all on their own because we don't have that beautiful storefront to kind of show that we're a professional and a legitimate business. So what we do need to do is we need to show professionalism wherever we can. So here are the ways to avoid looking unprofessional. So the very first interaction that your customer is most likely going to have with you is going to be either via text message or on Facebook Messenger if you run a business page or on Instagram or perhaps if you do it the old fashioned way and somebody calls in, that is going to be the first impression that they have of you. Of course, there are things like pictures and your portfolio that they must have looked at first which is what got them to pick up the phone or message you in the first place. So now the ball is really in our court to make sure that we come off as professional as possible. Now, the reason that I think it's so, so important how you interact with your customers is because I know that when people interact with me in an unprofessional manner, then for somebody like me who is already on the fence actually about ordering from at-home businesses in general, it kind of puts me even more on edge and I'm more likely to go with a competitor who actually has a storefront and who is a lot more expensive. Yep, you heard that right. I'm willing to pay the price for professionalism. Whenever I was selling my home-baked goods, I made it a point to be as professional as possible. Here are a few do's and don'ts when speaking with your customers. I always start off every interaction with hello and then whatever their name is, and then a comma. I know this sounds really strange that I'm walking you through this, but you would be surprised at the amount of people that actually haven't written a whole lot of formalized letters or formalized interactions before. So this is really important. I actually avoid saying things like, hi, or hey, that's a little bit too informal. I like to keep it really, really formal with my customers, especially if I don't know them. Even if they say, hi, I heard about you from your sister or my friend ordered from you, I still make it a point to be super, super professional. Do use friendly language. You do want to be very kind. You don't want to come off as cold. So if you just get straight to the point and add periods to all of your sentences, it can come off as cold. As we know, especially in textual conversations, it's really hard to decipher somebody's tone. So it's really important that you use formalities that are friendly. For example, you're going to start off with that hello bit, and then at the very end, you want to say something like, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Kindest, Ashley, for example. And then underneath, I usually like to write my business name as well. And you can have this set to auto form, especially if you're on email interactions, this can happen very, very easily. So that's the first thing. You do wanna make sure you have a good opening and ending and using very, very kind but formal language. Do make sure that you use correct grammatical language. Try your very, very best to make sure that you don't have any spelling errors. And I really mean the yours and yours and the there, there, theirs and all of those things. Right away from me, if somebody uses those incorrectly, the likelihood of me clicking off of that email or message is very, very high. And if spelling and grammar isn't your strong point, then you might want to auto select something on your Facebook page saying, please give me a call or thank you for contacting me. Please give me a call at whatever your phone number is. Do be prompt with your messaging. Make it a point to try and answer your customers within at least 24 hours. If you can't do that, chances are you're going to lose the customer and your business is going to look a little bit unprofessional as well because it shows that you don't have a PR team to keep up with your messaging. And of course, us at-home bakers know that we really are the PR team, we're the decorating team, we're all the teams. But as an at-home baker, it's really important to seem like you can do it all. Don't use emojis. Whatever you do, don't use emojis. 
A well-placed smiley face at the end of an interaction I think is fine, but anytime you're putting lots of hearts or the birthday cake emoji, automatically that seems very unprofessional to me and it makes me lose faith in whatever company I am speaking to. I much prefer when they just used formal but friendly language. Don't hit that send button before you've reread it at least four or five times. I know a lot of business owners in this day and age, especially we're in a rush. We are in a hurry. So we'll type, 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 and we all know how good our autocorrect is on our phones. And then all of a sudden you've typed in a bunch of mistakes or maybe even something inappropriate that you would never want a customer seeing. So it is so important that you proofread everything. The second thing that can make you seem a little bit unprofessional is when you are too accommodating. I know that sounds a little bit weird because we should be accommodating of our customers, but when you have no parameters whatsoever, it kind of makes the customer feel like they can kind of do whatever because you're not a legitimate business. You want to legitimize your business at every turn. For example, when a customer asks me for my flavors, I really give them a set flavor list. Only if the customer really insists that they want a particular flavor, then I try to guide them towards my existing flavors that I already have that are close to that. If they're still insistent, then of course you can say, I can make that for you, but it's going to be X charge for a specialized cake order like that, for example. I know it might seem a little bit strange, but standing your ground is one of the things that customers actually like. They like those parameters. They might not know they like those parameters, but they do. And here's what I mean. Of course, I would love it if I spoke to somebody and they said, I can do whatever you want, but it's actually a lot easier for me as a customer to process when they give me a list of three choices. For example, when I'm getting my makeup done, something that I don't really know much about. I love it when they tell me, this is the set price for your makeup application. If you want false lashes with it, it's going to be this price. If you want this type of 3D makeup, then it's going to be this price. Or if you want prosthetics, it's going to be this price. I love it when people tell me exactly what it is that I want and what it is that I should be paying for. Because honestly, as someone who doesn't know makeup at all, I want somebody to give me that guidance. If you leave it too open, especially as a cake decorator, well, first of all, it's going to be a big headache for you, but it also comes off as a little bit unprofessional and like you don't know what you're doing. So I really think it's important to give a direct outline of parameters for your product. Another thing that I think you should avoid doing is send photos. Now, I will say that I used to do this a lot, actually, because I was a little bit insecure about my product. I wanted people to have the ability to tell me if there was something that I should change. But really, I think this actually makes it look a little bit more unprofessional, and it just doesn't seem like something that a legitimate bakery would do. And honestly, bakeries don't send you photos of your cake before you pick it up, and they don't send you photos of your cookie order before you pick it up. So why should we? I mean, yes, you could look at it at the side of, well, that's the perk of ordering from an at-home baker. You're getting a much more personalized experience. But from what I can tell you is this. One, sending a photo, especially if it's a photo where something is in progress, you're kind of letting them into your home space. It leaves room for them to pick at every single minor detail. It also gives them that time to stew over something that they might not be that happy with. Whereas if they just pick it up on site, chances are they're going to be happy with it and they won't have that time you're giving them when you send a photo for them to really critique it. This isn't a hard and fast rule. If you really want to send your clients photos, by all means do it. I just think that if we're going in line with what most professional bakeries do and most commercial bakeries do, they're not sending photos to their clients. Ever-changing prices. And this kind of goes back to that parameter thing. We want to make sure that once we quote, we don't go back on it. We never change our word. 
and in the beginning it is really really difficult to quote properly and you might quote something way under and then you know three hundred dollars worth of products later that you had to purchase in order to pull that cake order off you feel like oh man i need to change how much i would charge for this but never ever do that and you'd be surprised i've heard of cake decorators trying to go back and then change the price you really can't do that. It's unprofessional and it's really unfair too. So whatever price that you state, you got to stand firm by it. So going back to point number one, that's where the proofreading really, really matters. Now let's say you're not ready to quote that price, then it's okay. Don't leave your customer hanging though. Say, I will get back to you within X amount of days, X amount of hours, whatever you want to set regarding the price of your cake. Give yourself time to think about it. It does not need to be instantaneous. It is much better to take a little bit of time, but be firm on your pricing. That's never going to change. Another thing that makes your caking business look a little bit unprofessional is if you don't take a deposit. Now I'm guilty. I didn't always take a deposit, especially if I felt like I could trust the person, which is weird because how would you know to trust the person if you've never met them? So you can choose to take whatever deposit amount you want. I highly recommend that you take down 50%. E-transfers are probably the best idea right now. It's also a great way for you to look back so that you can do your taxes really easily when you do an e-transfer. Not only does it make your business look more professional when you ask for a deposit, it actually gives the customer a sense of relief, I think. Not only does asking for an e-transfer provide you with a little bit of assurance that you're going to get paid at least a portion, even if for some reason they decide they don't want to pick up their cake, but it also is a way to show them that yes, you're serious about the order, the deposit has been taken, and it gives them that comfort that they know that their cake is going to get made. And if it doesn't, well, there's been a change in hands of money. So you kind of have to make it for them. A professional sounding email address is really important. Now, I know nowadays we're using a lot of Facebook Messenger, we're using a lot of Instagram to communicate, but there are a generation of people that maybe don't have Instagram or don't even have Facebook and are relying solely on email address. So, you know, butterfly626 at hotmail.com doesn't really sound that professional. And this is a really easy fix. You just need to come up with a professional sounding email sweet dreams bake shop at gmail.com or whatever and that way you legitimize your business just that extra bit more if you want to go a step further and have your own at whatever your email is i mean you can pay for that but i don't think it's necessary even some commercial bakeries don't have that Now, I know that pickups last all of two seconds usually, but I do think it's important to come to the door looking professional whenever you're handing off the cake. I also think it's important that you yourself are handing off the cake and not somebody else, especially if it's the first time that that person is ordering from you. I think it looks really great if you wear your own apron or whatever when you're answering the door, but whatever you do, you want to look put together. I know that sounds a little bit weird too. It sounds like like a little extra step that a lot of people wouldn't care about. But the problem is, is that you don't know when a person is going to care and a person isn't going to care. So it's best for you to cover all your bases and show up at the door looking professional. It's also one more way for you to have one more interaction with that customer. Be friendly, be warm, be smiley, give them their cake. And I assure you that impression at the door is going to be long lasting. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've had wonderful conversations with people online for their business or whatever they're making. I go to pick something up and I have not a very good interaction with them. It actually has turned me away from ever purchasing from them again. And it wasn't as if it was a super negative interaction. They just weren't very friendly. They just weren't very warm. So for me, I want to support businesses where I feel welcomed to purchase their product. And I want them to be happy that people are purchasing their product. I think that's super, super important. Now I know I said 
said that that was the last interaction you may have with them, but I always, always make it a point to follow up with them two times. Yes, two times. Can seem like a little bit of overkill, but when you're first starting out, these are the interactions that are going to place your business above the rest. So the first interaction you wanna have after they pick up their order, right away, I message them right away. Hello, whoever, it was so great meeting you. I hope you enjoy your cake or cookies for insert special occasion here. Also, this is a reminder that your cookies can be left out for X amount of time. Whatever follow-up care instructions you want to give to your product. And of course, you can edit, copy, edit, paste that. You want to have something standard that you say about your fondant cakes, your buttercream cakes, your cookies, whatever you are serving, you want to make sure that you have some sort of follow-up on how to handle the leftovers or how to handle that product before it is going to be served. That right there would be interaction number one after they've picked up their order. And this is especially important if somebody else is picking up their order. It lets them know, okay, great, that person has picked up the order, they, they've got it in their possession, and these are the things that I need to do with that order. Because as we all know, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, aunts, uncles, they come and pick up the order for somebody special in their life on behalf of that someone special, and they can't always quite remember all the instructions that you're giving them. So it's best just to have a quick and friendly interaction and then send them that follow-up email. And then the second thing that you want to send to them will be a week later. I know, this seems like a lot to keep up with, but if you want to stand out among the competition as a very professional, professional caring company, I assure you this will help you. So the second thing that you want to say is, I hope you enjoyed your XYZ, whatever it is that they ordered. It was a pleasure making it or whatever you want to say about it. Cheers, Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, or cheers, Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. Whatever you want to say. Now don't be discouraged. Sometimes you will not get a message again. A lot of people just think, great, that was the end of it, awesome, she messaged me, fantastic, done. But I can tell you from experience that every time I have done this, I have received a message somewhat later on down the line. It could have been a year down the line. And sure, maybe some of that is due to the actual product and they enjoyed that. But I really have firm beliefs that a lot of it is because of the way that I interacted with customers. And this rings true for when I worked at the commercial bakery as well. People's personalities draw people in and make them wanna buy from you. So those are the ways that you can make your small little bakery look a little bit more professional and for you to keep generating those orders and making money. Now I know some of those things seem maybe a little bit strange or maybe a little bit too picky, but I assure you from my experience, doing these things really, really helped propel my business. I often saw these things being done too at the commercial bakery that I used to work at and it really does make the difference. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. But right now I'm uploading daily so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Be sure to submit your baking fail and it can be fixed by next Friday.